Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we are thankful to the Lord for you that are here. And we're going to, let's see, go to the throne. And after which we're going to go to the word of God. So join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this precious day that you've given to us. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you've said and done. And let today, O oh God, continue to be a day of rejoicing and reflection by your gracious spirit. Thank you. Encourage the hearts of your people today. Build and strengthen, Lord God, and add to us. And let us leave this place with joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. All right, I'm going to talk to you today about something very familiar. And uh, if you will turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13. And after you found it, we will ask if you'll stand with us again. Very familiar passage of scripture. There's only 13 verses and we're going to read responsibly again. Beginning at verse 1. <clears throat> Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And together. And now, now abided faith, faith, hope, charity, charity these, these three, three but, but the, the greatest, greatest of these is, is charity. charity. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's thank, thank the Lord, the Lord. for... This precious you, word. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. God bless you. I'm going to do what is known as a topical sermon today. <clears throat> and the topic of love, and we're going to. A topical sermon is when you go to various scriptures in the Bible rather than from taking just one and exegeting from that one but I use that one as a basis because we all are so familiar with that love the theme the subject is love but the theme is understanding love's value and nature understanding love's value and nature love is very valuable to say the least, we've just read it, right? And um, so we are going to give you several things about love. And I'll call them forth and 
one by one. One is love is spirit. Love is spirit. Number two, love is service. Love is service. Number three, love is sacrificial. Love is sacrificial. Number four, love is supreme. Love is supreme. Number five, love is security. Love is security. And number six, the last one, love is stability. Love is stability. All right, I see some writing, so it looks like some of you uh, wrote those down. All right, love. Understanding love's value and nature. I go back to when I first started in the ministry, pastoring. I was asking God to use me in the supernatural. And he said, love. And I said, yeah, I, I know, but I still want, I want the gifts. So he never responded anymore about that. So, But after so many years, it's helping me to understand why God said love. Well, he didn't want me aiming at something that was secondary or he wanted me to understand what was more valuable. And so love is spirit. Second Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. But on the contrary, he's given us a spirit of power, spirit of love, and of a sound mind. Love is spirit. Galatians chapter Four says, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit, everybody see that, of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. God sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. Love is spirit, so when we walk in love, we walk in the spirit of Christ. For God is love. Are you with me? We have to keep step with the spirit. Sometimes the spirit may move this way and our desire to move this way, and we may want to move another way. That is, in our personal lives, otherwise so to keep in step with the spirit of Christ to keep in step with the spirit of love it takes yieldedness right it takes submission and obedience to the Lord love is spirit that's number one would you say it with me love is spirit, love is spirit. amen alright so God we see that God has given 
the spirit of his son. So we all, as Christians, we have a spirit of love, right? All right, so we do have to keep in step with spirit. Um, and he talks about that in Galatians there. He talks about the work of the flesh. And then he talks about the fruit of the spirit. Walk in the spirit and you're not fulfilled the lust of the flesh. So love is spirit. That's number one. Number two. Love is service. All service is not love, but love is service. Are you with me? All right. First, John, I, I, some of these scriptures I may not necessarily read. I may just quote them. It just depends. But First John 3. I'm basically just going to give you the scriptures for these uh, truths or concepts about love. So, Um, First John 3, we're going to read verses 16 and, I'm sorry, 17 and 18. Verse 17 says, But whoso hath this world's goods, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Everybody see that? Love is service. Love is service. I did say that all service is not love, but love is service. All right. So there are certain things about my love that must result in service to others in, in your love. Would you agree? All right. So I'm going to read again the book of Galatians 5. It says, For well, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Love is service. Are you still with me? All right, we go to Romans 13. Romans 13, this is all still love is service and the scriptures that I'm giving deals with service now. Romans 13, 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Love is service. Verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is service. Somebody say service. All right, one last scripture in this concerning love. Again, we, the theme is understanding love's value and nature. So we turn to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Okay. Verse 30, beginning at 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and behold him, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say to them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For or because I was and hungered and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. 
I was in prison and you came to me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came to thee? And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily I say to you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Somebody say love is service. All right, not only is love spirit, God has imparted and given to us the spirit of love, the spirit of Christ. He's given us number or to understand that love is not only spirit, but it's service. Uh, there is an action to love. Love is not an intangible thing alone by itself. Love is action. Am I right? Number three, love is sacrificial in its nature. Love is sacrificial. Love doesn't, uh, he says in 1 Corinthians 13, love seeks not her own. That means love is not selfish. Are you with me? There's a tendency we all in our old nature have a selfish old nature or fallen nature, but the new nature is totally unselfish. So we talked about keeping in step with love, right? The new nature, which is after God, or in the image of God is totally unselfish and is sacrificial in nature whenever it needs to be. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Well, there he was in his unselfishness gave his only son so that he could gain many others. He saw it important. He saw uh, gaining others more important than to tell his son, you cannot go through this. You cannot suffer this. Somebody say love is sacrificial. Sacrificial meaning act of giving up something of value for the sake of something regarded as more value. Love is sacrificial. The Bible says again in 1 John 3.16, we read 1 John 3.17, so we'll go back to 1 John 3. Verse John 3, 16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought, somebody say ought, to lay down our lives for the brethren. Are you with me? Love is sacrificial. I know that if God requires me to walk in his steps, then there will be sometimes I have to sacrifice that which I want for what others need or want. Are you with me? We want to walk in love. Love is spirit. Love is service. Love is sacrificial. Amen. Number four, love is supreme. Somebody say supreme. Supreme meaning here according to Webster. Superior to all others. This means strongest, most important, most powerful. Love is supreme, superior to all others. Look at what the writer says here in Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, empty and hollow. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am 
nothing. My identity is lost. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Love is supreme. Love is supreme. I, I, I want to find myself majoring on that which is supreme and not living a life that is secondary to what's most important to God. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have love toward another. This is most important in God's sight. So that means sometimes we have to put ourselves aside in order to fulfill the royal law. Isn't that right? I shall love thy neighbor as thyself. But uh, somebody may say, well, I don't love myself. Well, there is a problem there. Isn't that right? But God can fix that too. Uh, grateful and sure that he can do that. So love is supreme. That's number four. One other scripture here that's found to solidify that which I'm saying. First Timothy chapter one, verse five. Now the end of the commandment is charity or the goal of the commandment. Why God gives, what is the object of this commandment? Charity, love out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned from which some having swerved, that means turned aside from or didn't aim at, have turned aside to vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understand neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Love is supreme, somebody. Love is supreme. Love is uh, superior to all others. It is of most uh, value. So as I'm aiming at all the things that God has for me, I must aim to be more like him that's supreme am I loving am I dying to myself and at times when it uh, it's necessary am I am or am I living in a way that I am selfish look at someone said thank God that's not happening to you but love is supreme, is sacrificial, it is service, it is spirit. Number five, love is security. State of feeling safe, stable, and free from fear and anxiety. Love is security. Move with me to First John chapter four. Let me read something to you today. Verse 12, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we've seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect or complete, mature, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Are you seeing this? that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so have we become in this world. Are you hearing me? There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear and because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made secure, perfect, mature 
in love. We love him because he first loved us. So we see love is security. There's something about God's love when he loves us and loves us. It brings about a deeper sense of security. I, I can't love you. You can't love me adequately until I have received or till you have received the proper depth of God's love for your own self. And when that happens, the more I receive the depth of his love for me, it makes me secure and so that I'm not easily moved by you when you don't act right. It makes me secure. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Love is security. In state of feeling safe, stable, and free from fear and anxiety. Perfect love drives out fear. Because fear involves torment. Now he's speaking here uh, somewhat concerning the day of judgment. When, you know, when somebody's serving the Lord and, and they still, they have anxieties. They, they just don't know. They're afraid to die. Even Christians, they're afraid to die. They just don't know how God feels about them. But they're simply living in fear. And that means that they haven't been made real secure in that kind of love that God gives us. Because God's love sedates us. It makes us secure and it drives away the fears and the trepidations. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Love is security. I believe God's going to touch some of us where we need to be touched today to make us more secure in him. Can I say this again? I can't love you until I have received love properly. Can I, can I say this to you? So we cannot love one another adequately until we have received properly the love that comes from God. It brings security. I'm not always thinking bad thoughts about you if I have received the love because I understand something about the nature of God. The Bible says, he that loveth not knoweth not God. That means he doesn't have an intimate relationship with God. Yeah, he, he may have an, a relationship with God, but it, it's not close enough. It's not intimate enough. He knows God somewhat, you know. He may even hear and have revelation from God, but that intimacy, he, 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 he doesn't know him well enough um, to begin to understand what's important to God. But I want to tell you that God wants to change that. There's a lost and there's a dying world out there. They don't know God. They don't profess to know God. But we that are called by his name, we profess to know God. Love is security. Hallelujah. I remember a man, he was a minister over several and he, and when some junction in his ministry, he was just really feeling terribly rejected by parishioners and others. And somehow God revealed himself to him in such a way. He knew and he understood God loved him. That changed his life forever. He received God's love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then finally, love is stability. Love is stability. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3, if you will. We talked for the last two Sundays about being grateful. Were you there? Were you here to hear that? Look at your neighbor and say, were you here to hear that? Being grateful. 
There's so many things you can find to complain about. Dime a dozen. But oh, look, we here worshiping God in freedom and in peace. That's not happening all over the world. The hurricane didn't wash us out. We can return to our homes even though the heritage came, came and it's gone. We're not to take this for granted. We are to be grateful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody said, well, I don't have me a nice home like I want it. But you're living. You have life. You have health and strength, isn't that right? Jesus said, having food and raiment, let us be content, isn't that right? Because we brought nothing into this world and we're not gonna take anything with us. I've been, I've preached several sermons over the years, but there's not one sermon that I saw a U-Haul truck and furniture and all the belongings bear it in the ground with that person. They died alone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it's certain that we'll take nothing with us. So having food and clothing, Paul said, let's be content. Isn't that right? I used to worry God to no end. I just wanted this. I just wanted that. I just wanted, I just wanted, just wanted, wanted, wanted to. And I, and I can imagine God said, boy, that boy, He's just not grateful. You know what I'm saying? But now at my age, when I can walk, get up on my own, oh my God, when I can sit down, I can bathe myself, I can do these things. I don't know if it took me becoming 70 some years old, but to be grateful, but I'm grateful. Are you hearing me? <laughs> I'm grateful. I've got friends that have already gone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've got friends that have already gone. They never made it three scores and 10. Somehow he kept me here. I've got to be thankful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Number seven, love is stability. No, I hear him again. He's, it's like he says, you know, you be thankful for what you got. What I've discovered about God is he only gives me more when I'm grateful for what I have. As long as I'm ungrateful for what I have, I'm not getting anything else from God. That's just the way he works. Look at somebody said, that's just the way God is. But the moment I look at what I have, say, God, everything that I have came from you. I'm gonna lift my hands. I'm gonna be grateful to you for everything that you've given me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Then the blessings just keep on coming and you're trying to figure out, well, God, I didn't do nothing to deserve this. Uh, and, and this is, I remember when I got my house over there and somebody said, uh, you, well, the Lord said, and he said, I want you to get another house. I said, God, I got a house. But the Lord wanted to do more. He said that those that saw you sacrifice. And I took you to a rock bottom. And they saw it. So he said, I want them to see me bless you. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. This won't cost you anything. Look at somebody say, stay with God. Stay with God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Love is 
Number seven, stability. Ah, I feel it again. Somebody, you got to be grateful. Stop bugging God. Stop bugging God about these things that down here. Somebody here, I don't know who you are here, but I feel it in my soul. Stop bugging God about this matter, this material stuff. The, uh, it, it's going to perish away. But there's something more valuable than those bricks and mortars. Hallelujah. Somebody says, it's easy for you to say, yeah, you got this and you got that. No, I served God when I had none of that. No, no, no. Those things didn't determine my loving for God. Hallelujah. I can tell you something, but I ain't going there today. I just want. Hallelujah. But God, in God, we must be faithful. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Finally, number seven, love is stability. Now, Ephesians chapter three. Verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. Let me go back to the first part, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith I heard one interpretation says that God may feel right at home in your, in your heart. And I thought about when God is in the heart. Have you ever uh, uh, gone to somebody's house and they made you feel uncomfortable? You know, you, you're sitting there in the living room and somebody, maybe they want you to go, they're looking at their watch or maybe, maybe they're throwing hints. They, they, they're kind of saying, I want you out. You know, I just... And sometimes the way we act, sometimes we make God uncomfortable in, uh, we're, we're in his home. But, but that, that text was saying um, that Christ may dwell in, may feel right at home in your heart. And so when Christ is at home and feels at home in, in your heart, and then no matter what you go through, then what's happening is that love that comes from God is making you more secure, more secure. You go through trial, but Christ is at home in your heart, and that love of God through the trial is being shed abroad all over your soul, all over your being. And before you know it, that love, you're rooted and you're stable in love and when you're rooted and stable in God's love then you can comprehend you can grasp you got a mental grasp as to how you to treat others are you hearing what I'm saying look what he says here I'm going back that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints, where is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. I, I, I just got this sneaky suspicion that uh, uh, when I was studying that about uh, comprehend with all saints, I heard just subtly mental grasp, perception. And when our perceptions have been so bathed in God's love. There's a song that says, take a good look at yourself and you look at others differently. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Put your hands in the hand of the man from Galilee. Oh my God, my God, my God. There the people, the thief was talking about him. He said, man, he, you, you save everybody. Won't you save yourself? And then the other said, you know, you, you, you be careful what you're saying. You know, that, that man, such and so. And then when he hung there, before he took his last breath, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. You see, it was that love of the father that was in him hallelujah 
and Stephen before he died. Oh, they were stoning that man. And boy, he could have been angry enough to explode. But I heard the Bible says in the book of Acts, he was there and they were stoning before he took his last breath. He said, Lord, don't lay that sin to their charge. And the Bible says he yielded up the ghost. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Love will do it for you. Love will do it for you. Love will help us to see others differently. It'll take away our complaining and our talking about others. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let's major now on the things that matters the most with God. This man, you know him well. I don't like calling preacher's name over the other thing, but one man says, very, very well known, he said, it's the enemy in a me. <laughs> so the enemy in a me sometimes makes us, it's in us so that we are not fighting Sometimes we are fighting Christ. You say, how am I fighting Christ? With unbelief. I'm fighting him sometimes with thoughts that are contrary to the new nature. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Fighting, but thanks be to God. He's going to stabilize us with love. He's going to make us Secure in his love. Hallelujah. Sometimes we fight ourselves. Isn't that right? But God says he'll make us secure in him. Not easily upset or disturbed. Not likely to change. That's what stable means. Stable. Solid. So he says being rooted. And grounded. In love. Be able to have a mental grasp or a perception to comprehend the height, the depth with all saints and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. So that love is available through Christ. And I believe at this hour, that's what the Lord is to do with us and for us so that we can be better prepared for the harvest. I believe there are people that will be coming and they already know. They already know that that which is supposed to be really genuine God got something for you, Ray. Don't leave yet. God, are you, you've got to leave this moment. Okay, I felt, now you're the one person he wants to minister to today. Um, if you got to go, then we'll see you at another time, all right? <laughs> Come on, let's give God praise. God is a wonderful God. And to know the love of God. Come on, thank him with me, if you will. Oh, what love that he has for me when he died on Calvary. Oh, what love. Oh, what love. Oh, what love was demonstrated. Stand with me today, if you will. There is that love that comes from God. God is love. I don't know about you, but I know there some of us have sometimes been touched by that love and that love just calmed you right down took 
the fighting, took the fussing, took the fears, that love that came from God. God is love. Oh, and so as he loves us, he wants us now to love one another. Oh, this is, this is the goal. This is the goal of God when he leaves us here on earth. That is to fulfill his will. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples when you have love one to another. Look at somebody and say, please, let's major on the major. Love is supreme, so we want it. Love is spirit, love is service, love is sacrificial, love is supreme. Love is security, and love is stability. Father, we love you right now. We're giving you the praise for the love that you sent through your son. Um, if, if, if you agree with me, let's, let's, while we're praying and thanking the Lord, um, remember what he's done for us all. And thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. And glory to God. Thank you for that love. Thank you, God. Make us more like you. Make us more like you, God. We want to be more like you. Oh, God, because you love the unlovable. Oh, God. And no one has to do...